Slum tourism, believe it or not, is a real type of tourism. Yes, you heard that right. People go to visit slums while they are on holiday. But why? Why do people do this? I'm going to tell you exactly that in this video. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Hayley Stainton, and I'm here to teach you all things travel and tourism. So let's start at the beginning. What is slum tourism? To put it simply, slum tourism is when people visit slums or more widely poverty-stricken areas as a form of tourism. This is usually in a foreign country when somebody is visiting as a tourist or on a business trip, but it can also happen domestically. Slum tourism has also been referred to as ghetto tourism or poverty tourism. Essentially, slum tourism involves transforming poverty, squalor and violence into a tourism product. It draws upon both altruism, the desire to do good, and voyeurism, having a good time. Believe it or not, slum tourism is actually one of the fastest growing niche tourism segments in the world, but it's also one of the most controversial. Some people view slum tourism as a type of charity tourism. People do this as it's within our human nature to want to help people who have less than we do. And it is also, of course, a chance to see somewhere new and explore a different culture. Some people choose to do volunteer work in a slum, often referred to as volunteer tourism. This can be a great way to boost your CV, as well as knowing that you have done something good. However, this does show that taking part in slum tourism isn't always a purely selfless act. And this is why it can sometimes be frowned upon. Furthermore, studies have shown that slum tourism can have negative impacts on local communities. The use of unskilled labour, for example, and the taking of jobs that could ultimately have gone to local people. There is also usually no long-term commitment involved. And of course, there is the concept of white saviour syndrome, the phenomenon in which a white person guides people of colour from the margins to the mainstream with his or her own initiative and benevolence, which tends to render the people of colour as incapable of helping themselves and disposes them of historical agency. And you can learn more about this by looking at the work of Camarota. This has been demonstrated within the mainstream media too. Think Ed Sheeran posing for comic relief with a number of black children, or Madonna adopting children from Malawi. So we can see there are perhaps some good things, some not so good things about slum tourism, but what does it actually involve? What are we actually doing when we go somewhere as a slum tourist? Many tour operators offer slum tours as part of their packages. And of course, you can visit slum areas alone too. Africantrails.co.uk, for example, have a page discussing slum tours, and they state that some of their packages do offer slum visits in Kenya, Uganda, Namibia, and more. Likewise, Reality Tours and Travel are another company that offers slum tours. As the name suggests, they hope to offer a realistic side to the places that tourists visit and an impressive 80% of the profits from every tour are reinvested back into the community through their NGO, Reality Gives. And most of their guides are recruited from the community too, which allows them to capitalise on the positive economic impacts of tourism. So let's look a little bit more about these positives of slum tourism. Slum tourism gives people an insight into how poverty can affect people. Humans are curious by nature, and if you're not living in poverty yourself or never have, then it can be hard to imagine what it's really like. Visiting a slum whilst on holiday is like opening a window to another life, however briefly that might be. It's also a chance to provide an income to people who live in the slums. If the tour involves some sort of opportunity to purchase goods or donate money, or if some of the profits are reinvested, then that's great for the local people. But as with any form of tourism, there are negatives too. The main negative of slum tourism is that it treats those who live in the slums as if they are in a zoo, dehumanising them to an extent, so tourists can see what it's like before swanning back off to their hotel and other luxuries. In fact, some would go as far as to argue that they are a form of the human zoo. These tours portray poverty as something exotic, rather than a very real danger to the lives of the people that are impacted by it. It's also very questionable how far the money trickles down. When people are paying for organised tours, how can we be sure that real people who live in the slums have access to any of the money that's raised through slum tourism? And then of course, slum tourism has many ethical questions surrounding it. 
Looking at the pros and cons, it is clear that there are many ethical questions surrounding slum tourism. People who live in poverty and live in slums are real people. We need to ask ourselves whether it's fair for them to be paraded around in front of us as part of an organised tour that we're paying to go on. And there are lots of questions that we should actually ask ourselves if we are looking to engage in slum tourism. We should ask things such as, how are the guided tours organised? Are the economic benefits of slum tourism directed towards the local population? Are the tourists educated to be respectful of the local people? Are the people living in the slums treated fairly? In essence, tourists are coming in from outside to view life in a slum through a western lens just for a few minutes. Does this paint a fair picture of the slums? Is it ethical? Let me know what you think in the comments. Now to finish up this video, I'm going to put what we've been talking to into practice and show you some examples of slum tourism destinations. South Africa. Slum tourism exists across South Africa for sure. Here it's actually known as township tourism. In South Africa, townships are the underdeveloped urban areas, generally populated by people of colour as a fallout from the apartheid era. Apparently, around 25% of visitors to Cape Town engage in township tours. And this city alone has around 50 township tour operators. Brazil. Slum tourism in Brazil equates to favela tours. Favelas are slums or shanty towns built on the outskirts of major cities across Brazil. And many people visit them for tourist purposes whilst on holiday in this beautiful country. Favelas are known to be very dangerous areas. They are rife with crime, violence and drug dealing. But this doesn't put the tourists off and thousands of them visit every month with curiosity. India. As I mentioned before when I spoke about reality tours and travel, India is a prime spot for slum tourism due to the high levels of poverty here. The film Slumdog Millionaire put India's slums onto the screens for millions of people, many of whom as a result became keen to visit India and to see these slums for themselves. For example, there are around 15,000 people who visit the Dharavi slum each year alone. Indonesia. Jakarta is home to a slum where families of five squeeze into houses that are no bigger than your average western bathroom. They survive on pennies and welcome tourists into their homes to see what it's like. Jakarta Hidden Tours is run by a guy called Ronnie. He's a charity worker who donates half of his profits to the local community in an attempt to improve their lives. And I think that's what it's all about, or that's at least what it should be about. Tourism has such a force for good, it can do so much good. But all too often it doesn't because it's not managed in the best possible way. So slum tourism could be a great thing or it could be a really bad thing. It all depends on how it's managed in that particular locality. Sadly, the amount of people who live in slums is expected to grow considerably in the next few years. This is because of population growth in a lot of poorer urban areas. India perhaps being the biggest example. So there is the potential that this type of tourism will grow a lot more. Should it? Will it? We'll see what happens. But I hope you have found this video interesting. And if you have, I have lots more. So uh, maybe check out one of these videos next.